down there at Bordeaux Jim Costa Hill. Fighter, former fighter, now just full time trainer. I uh, started off in karate, Shokan Karate. Uh, me and my brother, we started at four years old. Uh, we fought Shokan Karate up until we were uh, 16. Um, and then uh, Muay Thai was sort of next progression. Uh, at that stage, it was just sort of coming in and Muay Thai was a new thing. Uh, we had exhausted karate as far as we could and uh, Muay Thai was the next best thing. So um, here we are, 22 years later. MMA, Muay Thai is the base for MMA to stand up. So we get a lot of uh, good MMA guys coming down to spar with me and Steve. Uh, as they regard us, they're some of the best in Australia for, for stand up. Um, so I guess that MMA has got a lot of disciplines to sort of cover and they want to try and um, be good at everything. It's quite hard, so they, they try to come here, try and strengthen up their um, stand up and, and sharpen everything up. So that, that makes the whole game a bit better. My, everything revolves around my gym, uh, the fights, the fighting, the, the guys I train, you know, the girls, the classes, this is, this is work, full time job for me. So I'm quite lucky uh, to be doing something I love and get paid for it. Uh, and also, you know, promoting shows and stuff too. So it does take up a lot of time, but also gives me a lot of time to do what I want. I now have a two year old son who comes and hangs out with me at the gym, which is fantastic. Uh, and he'll be the next one coming through as a, as a world champion, I think. Although we've got the best fighters in the world in Australia here, it's still not recognised enough to um, be a full-time job as just fighting and pay for it. We're so far away from the rest of the world as far as Europe and all the stuff where the big shows are. It's quite hard. Uh, that's why you see a lot of um, ex Muay Thai fighters going to MMA now, which um, is a lot more mainstream than the UFC, obviously. And everybody knows what UFC is, so that's where the dollars are, and that's where sort of all our good fighters are starting to head towards. Uh, initially, I started with, with my trainer Nick Stone down in Manly. He's the original Bulldog. I've uh, been, been training with him for you know, since I was 19, I think, a very long time. And uh, a natural progression, obviously, I started training some fighters and wanted to open up my own gym. He said, why don't we expand the Bulldog name? Uh, and that's where it sort of come from. Initially, I started in Blacktown and I moved to Castle Hill about 15 years ago. And I, here I've been ever since. You've got to have something special. You can't just be, I mean, just to be a good fighter is one thing, but you've got to have something special to offer. You've got to, you've just got to dedicate, you get into it while you're young. So whilst you have no responsibilities or ties, you can, you can make a go of it. Because I mean, obviously as you get older, you get a family, you get a mortgage, you get a house, and all this sort of stuff, and it makes it very hard. So try and get into it as long as, long as you can, and um, you know, try and offer something special that somebody else doesn't have.
karate instructor himself. I'm still trains today, actually. And uh, he got both the brother and I into it when we were four years old. And we did Shadokan karate. And we did a lot of tournament fighting and stuff, which is all non-contact fighting. We had lots and lots and lots of tournament fights. But it was just semi-contact. And then it was just a progression to just uh, go into the Muay Thai, more realistic, and then here we are today. It's my dream come true to travel around the world fighting. Uh, it's what I've always wanted to do. I gave up everything to, to be a fighter, and then that took me to all the places I've been. I've been to so many different countries around the world, seen so many different things, and uh, I feel privileged. I think uh, when I was a young kid, I had a bit of a bad temper. And uh, I'm 36 years old, I, I can't remember, I remember losing my temper for the last time when I was about 23. So I'm very relaxed and confident in myself, which means I never ever get into a fight. Um, anyone ever picks fights with me, you know, it's just, I can cool it and walk away because I have nothing to prove to anyone, I have nothing to prove to myself. Um, it's all done in the ring and released. You know, six days a week is punch and kick. Last thing I want to do is go out there and get in a fight for that reason one, but also is that uh, young kids usually want to prove things to themselves, to their mates, and, um, and I, I don't have anything to prove to anyone. Um, that's what training's done for me, it just gives you that confidence within yourself to just treat everyone equal. And it's easier to be nice.
Uh, it's you know it's a dream come come true for me because I always love fighting and um, to do it professionally and to do it for a living. It's um, you know I, I like it's, I have fun doing it. Um, it's a big challenge and uh, yeah, it's, it's great for me. My perfect job. I have to make a lot of sacrifices and um, you know it's been paying off. And I've only just gone to the UFC now and now I have to work twice as hard to try and get to the top where I want to go and uh, have fun while doing it. My biggest influence would have been Mark Hunt. Uh, Mark Hunt is K1 superstar in Japan. And um, he went from pretty much fighting on the Latin circuit to you know, becoming the world's best in, in, in uh, Japan. And um, he, there and, uh, he crossed over to MMA. He done really well for himself and you know, me and him come from a similar background so you know, I'm cool. You know, if he can do it, you know, why like can't I? If I put my head down and work hard, you know, I'll be able to get somewhere like him. Four days before a fight I had two years ago, um, Christchurch got hit by a really big earthquake that just destroyed the whole city. And, um, you know, from watching on the TV and all the, you know, it was a big disaster back there, and I had a lot of friends and family live there as well, so, you know, it wasn't hard for me to, to be able to, you know, donate or do something for the city, you know, and um, I donated my fight earnings to the earthquake field. Yeah, everyone's got a different approach to uh, the training methods and stuff like that, so, you know, I like to ask a lot of questions to fighters around the world and try and get some advice off them. You know, some, some advice might work for me, um, some my advice for them might you know, work for them as well, so you've got to listen to your trainers, <laughs> listen to your training partners. Um, no, nah, just pretty much just have a really good relationship with them. Because those guys are going to help you if you go a long way. You know, if you're feeling sour towards someone in the gym, you're not going to get good sessions. You're not, you're not going to learn uh, a lot. Um, so have a good relationship with your training partners and coaches, and um, yeah, good things will come.